want to play a good budget deck, you don't want to spend a whole lot of money to play the next best deck in Digimon, you can play green. What I've managed to do is through two green starter decks, the Giga Green starter decks, we've successfully built a deck using just singles found in two starter decks. This deck legitimately can cost you $30 and it has the ability to take games off of the best decks if you know how to play the cards correctly and against the tier 2 meta works wonders. We're going to go through the deck profile, we're going to go through a couple combos and we're going to talk about budget changes you could make. Changes that are not expensive, you know, maybe won't break the bank for you, just cheap commons on commons that you can throw in to improve the value of the deck even further. Don't forget, if you guys are unaware, that I'm streaming Digimon tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. We're opening a case of Great Legends and then we're going to be building decks and doing multiple deck profiles, combos, games, just with a whole new Great Legends slew of cards. Hopefully you guys make it. Uh, it would mean a lot to me if you showed up. Let's have a good awesome time together. And finally, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn that notification bell into Smash Potatoes, because it's a green card. This is a green deck, and I really think you guys will enjoy this one. Without further ado, let's show it off. As usual, we'll start with the eggs, but we only have four eggs to work with this time. We're playing four Motimon. Motimon has a year turn while it's level six or higher, gets plus 1,000. That's all we got to work with. It's honestly okay. Sure thing, we'll play them. For our level threes, we'll start off with four Palmon. This Palmon has an inheritable. If you attack an opponent's Digimon, it gets plus 2,000 for the turn. So this, this whole point of the deck is to attack creatures and, you know, deal security damage. So attacking for an extra 2,000 can get over things, especially the lower levels. Really good card. Now, what I think the best level three in the deck is four Tentamon. It's an on play, real top card of your deck. If it's a green Digimon card, add it to your hand. Most of our deck are green Digimon cards, so this is almost always going to resolve. Next, we play four Kunmon. We play this because it costs zero to evolve, and it's 5,000, which is kind of scary for a level three, but we're never going to hard play it because it costs four, and that's way too much. Finally, we're playing two Floramon. It's basically Mushroommon. Two to play, one to evolve, 4,000 DP. Ideally, we don't evolve on this one either. Sometimes you have to, but if you do, it can like choke an opponent, especially first turn. So maybe it's not the end of the world. But yeah, 14 rookies. There's no other rookies that come with the deck. It's just these ones. Uh, you could play an extra two of this if you wanted to. Up to you. But I think 14 is the perfect ratio for what we're trying to do here. For all level fours, we'll start with the best one. For Kabuterimon. This is a one cost to evolve blocker. Very good card. One cost to evolve excellent sometimes you will want to keep it as a blocker and that's fine too having the ability to evolve for one and then go into something else if you need to is very good it's the only level four we have that can go for one evolve so that's fine now we play four togemon when attacking if you attack an opponent's digimon it gets plus two thousand that's an inheritable same as the palmon so if it's a level five on top of this and a palmon that's pretty scary that can kill a lot of stuff so it is really cool and to wrap it up, we're playing four Kuwagamon, costs two to evolve, it's a 6,000 DP. It's ideally the worst one, theoretically, but these are the only level fours that we can work with, literally the only ones. So we're playing four of each to give us 12, just to help our curve out a little better. For our level fives, we start with four of the best one, Mega Kabuterimon. It's inheritable is insane. Once per turn, when this Digimon deletes an opponent's Digimon in battle and survives, trash the top card of your opponent's security stack. It does not trigger the card. It doesn't flip it over. It doesn't care. It's just free damage. That's very good. Very good. It's just got to survive the battle, which is pretty easy. Honestly, really great card. I would play more of it if we could, but we can't. So there you go. Next, we play four Akuamon. We're doing this one because it costs two to evolve, and I do want the cheap option. So there we go, that's it. 7,000 DP is nice too. And finally, two Lilimon. When Digivolving, you reveal top five cards of your deck at a level six to your hand. We're only not, we're not playing four of this, A, because there's no room, but B, we're playing green. And we have a very high chance of fighting level sixes regardless of this card. I also don't want to bottom deck important things like we'll get to later. So two is fine. That's all we gotta really say about it. 10 level fives, good ratios, let's move on. Now for the start of the show, we're playing four Hercules Kabuterimon, the cover card. This card costs four to evolve, a little clunky. Ideally, you keep this in the breeding area. 
and then you bring it out. It evolves for four, it has 12,000 DP, it has piercing, and it has digiburst. So we haven't done a digiburst yet on this profile because it's new, and we have never done digiburst before because it's a new set. Digiburst is you take cards out of the evolution stack and you activate the effect. So for Digiburst 2, you can suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. It's really cool, obviously, because you can suspend something and attack it with piercing. Very strong, still getting a damage through and killing a Digimon. And if you really want to, if you bought it in for breeding area, you can do it twice. I don't know if that'll ever come up, but it is very, very good. Um, it hasn't come up for me yet, but in a situation, you might have multiple attackers, suspend multiple things, kill multiple things. Really good card all around. It's your boss monster. We're also playing four Rosemon, the other level six that we have access to. Three to evolve is good. When digivolving, one of your opponent's Digimon cannot attack or block until the end of the turn, until the end of their next turn. So this just stuns something like a yellow War Greymon or something just completely scary. It can completely just negate that card for a turn. And that's really powerful. If you have enough memory, you can friggin' evolve into this and you can suspend a blocker and go for some damage too. So that's also good. But yeah, that's all we have access to, and this is where you want to end up in your deck. So we play the full eight. So that's 44 Digimon. We play four Needle Spray. This is like Flower Cannon. It's two to play. Its main is to spend one of your opponent's Digimon, same as Flower Cannon. Its Inheritables is a little different though. Its security effect is a little different. You activate the main effect, and then you return it to your hand. So you suspend one of your opponent's attackers, and you get to do this again on your turn at some, any point in time. It's interesting to play the Flower Cannon, because it's not just one big wipe. Uh, it can also suspend blockers in the battle phase, which I guess is interesting. Uh, Needle Spray is what we have to work with. It's going to be a toss-up in the meta whether or not you play this card or Flower Cannon. They're both good, and we have access to four Needle Spray. So... Honestly, really good card. And our final two cards are two Izzy Izumi, the Tamer. During your turn, when one of your opponent's Digimon becomes suspended, you may suspend this Tamer to gain memory. Your top end does suspend opponent's Digimon, so you're getting free memory. And as soon as you've done it twice, you get your money back, basically. Honestly, uh, you gotta play two of this, in my opinion. I don't think you play any more, it's kind of bricky. Honestly, though, really good card. And that wraps it up for the deck profile. Let's talk about some combos real quick. So we'll start with our Izzy, because he's right here, and we mentioned the level 6s. Um, if you digiburst something, you get a memory. Really good, first of all. Uh, but Rosemon, when digivolving, it basically turns it into a 2-cost evolution if you have Izzy. And that has a very good chance of not ending your turn. So like you can still suspend a blocker or whatever you want and go for it. So that's why Izzy is very important. Uh, you can also trigger Izzy with a card like Needle Spray. So that's amazing all by itself. Lots of ways to abuse Izzy in this deck. Again, you don't want to play multiples because, you know, multiples of those and not your Digimon in a green deck is really unfortunate. But it is really good to have, and that's just showing off Izzy. These cards make Izzy a whole lot better. All right, now we want to show off the ideal stack. Like, how do you make this as scary as it can be? Keep in mind it does have Digiburst, and the stack might not matter. But if we're playing it very well. We want to go Modimon, obviously, into Palmon for the 2000 Inheritable, into Togemon for the 2000 Inheritable, and then we want to go into Her uh, Mega Copyterimon, into Hercules Copyterimon. So, what does this allow you to do? Well, if it attacks over an opponent's Digimon, uh, it's 17,000, which is insane and beats everything right now. And then you're going to pierce. You're probably not going to die to a security check because you're 17,000. And then you can just trash a security for free. That's honestly really good. If you do need to digiburst something, well, the things you want to digiburst are obviously these two. That way you're still 14,000 and you're still doing a security extra with the Mega Mon and with piercing. And odds are you're still not going to die. You might want to be careful if you're playing a deck that does play level 7s, like Chaos Mons, new one, uh, Omnimon still. Gotta be wary for those. But if you're playing like Millennium on, if you're playing purple, it's still it's still free, basically. So keep that in mind. This is ideally what you want to do with Hercules Kabuterimon. Just touching on that note again, while Hercules Kabuterimon is good, if they are playing a lot of Lyle Sevens, piercing could be scary, because then you don't survive if you check something big. Well, with Rosemon suspending an opponent's Digimon, what happens is you can attack that Digimon, and it's big, you're not gonna lose to anything. 
you're not doing a security check because you don't have piercing, and then you get a free security dump regardless, thanks to Mega Kabuterium on. So you might want to consider that play when playing against something that plays level 7s. Mega Zoo, Omnimon, you know, Green, Yellow, whatever. Whatever you want to do. Something you want to look into. Now, as promised, we can include a few other budget options. Very dirt cheap cards to make the quality of life of your deck even better if you want to go this route. These are, these are card choices that'll make your matchups a little better and give you a lot more power and a lot more consistency. First of all, get a fifth egg. Like, for real, these digit eggs are super cheap, under a dollar, under 50 cents, you know. Like, Minomon is a good one. When attacking, gain a thousand. Perfect for this kind of deck, not a big deal. There are a couple cheap level threes you can consider. Laulamon is a new one out of set four. It has an inheritable when it is digit burst to do return to your hand. So it's always kind of there if you digit burst it with your big boss monster, Hercules Kabuterimon. So it's nice to have. You can also play another level three like Terriermon to prevent your opponent from gaining memory outside of Tamers. There is stuff in the format that does that. You know, there's Blinding Ray, there's Hammer Spark, all sorts of stuff. So having Terriermon might not be a bad idea to be real. A cheap level, a, a cheap level four you can consider because I think level fours all together are pretty decent. But you can play something like Vegemon, one to evolve, four to play, very dirt cheap card from a financial aspect. It's just a Vegemon, man, no big deal. You can also consider playing something like Kabuterimon, cost one, and Inheritable is not bad. And it's a very, very dirt cheap card as well because it's friggin' common. So that's something to consider for your level four lineup. Four level fives, here, Argomon. It's at one for a reason, and it's a common. You know, Argomon with that Digisorption and the Inheritable to play level three for free when you attack, really broken stuff. It's why it's at one, it's not even a dollar. You can also consider things like Blossomons, because they're under a dollar, and they can potentially evolve for free thanks to Digisorption. Really good. And a final level five option, there's Cherrymon. Level five blocker uncommon. Also less than a dollar, and just gives you more blocking power. It's to, to evolve. Uh, yeah, what else do I gotta say? That's really freaking good. Now, turn to level 6, you might want to consider it's under a dollar, is Boncho Stingmon to attack over those decks that play 12,000 DP or higher and just crush them. Crush them with those extra security checks. That's all I gotta recommend for level 6, is to be real. It's honestly fine. Uh, a common, an uncommon option is Hidden Potential Discovered, also at one for a reason. Makes you level 6 of all for free. Also under a dollar, also only need one copy of it. No reason not to play it. And finally, if you want to get a fancy and you want to spend a few dollars on a card, get yourself a couple of Mimis. It's your memory tamer that goes to three, and as long as you're level five Digimon, you can just hatch more eggs. Really freaking good card. I got nothing else to say. So yeah, all these quality of life choices, maybe total $10 in t like total, which is kind of insane when you think about it. Maybe 20 if you want to get absolutely everything here. But that's even then. That's still 50 bucks. That's still a budget deck. But, you know, don't be afraid to play with $30. Don't be afraid at all. But these are definitely options you might want to consider going forward. And that's budget green for you. That's two green starter decks. These green starter decks are actually really competitive. They can do a lot of nasty things to your opponent. And if they don't know what they're doing, or you're playing the deck really well, you will steal some free wins. So if you're on a budget, I definitely recommend giving two green star decks a try. You might be able to topple locals with it, and who knows, you could go even further than that. Again, don't forget to check me out on Twitch tonight. We're gonna be having a great time with great legends, opening case, building decks, playing games, having a good time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time. Take care.